mean, at the Gobi Group, actually, we really we specialize at the intersection of technology and social impact. I mean, Gobi means go between, go between people, places, and technologies. How did a technology design firm come to working on communications for a maternal health project? We actually had been working on this project from the more of a technology angle for quite some time. So we were aware of what the project, how the project worked, how it was serving mothers, and we had visited the programs not only here in Kenya where the documentary is being shot or Uganda, but we had also visited programs in Tanzania, Cambodia, and Bangladesh. So we had a, a really good idea of what it was. And so the first thing we realized is that one is that the program is critical to helping poor women. That you could see just by being on the ground. Two is that we had to communicate the findings more broadly. And so we came up with a strategy that was really eightfold. One was a documentary, which we're calling in some sense an evaluation documentary, and the two was the website, and the two actually interact together. So we've been focused primarily on Kenya with the, uh, the main documentary, but we'll also be producing uh, some webisodes based on work in Uganda. Overall, the uh, reproductive health voucher programs are being evaluated by Population Council in uh, five countries, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Kenya, Uganda, and now, uh, as of a few months ago, Tanzania. What is common to all of them is they all provide vouchers for safe motherhood. It's called a bit of different name depending on what country you go to, but they all have the same suite of services. A mother can get a voucher either for free or for a nominal amount of money that entitles her to four antenatal visits, her delivery, as well as any complications she might have, and a postnatal visit. The voucher concept Sometimes when we talk about it from a technical perspective, it can seem complex, but it's really no more complex than a coupon that you might get at Nakamat here in Kenya or at Walmart in the States. So we have a, an amazing team of people working both uh, here in Africa, in Asia, and in the U.S. My name is Benjamin R. Harrison. I'm here in uh, Kibera, Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I'm the director of uh, the as yet untitled reproductive health voucher documentary that we've been shooting here for the last couple of weeks. Our main challenge on this project was that we're making a, an evaluative documentary about a program that hardly anyone has anything critical to say about, so we're trying to maintain our journalistic objectivity. I guess one of the big challenges for me was that I've never been to Kenya or Africa even. So I uh, was planning this whole movie from the States and we had a, had a pretty specific plan for the documentary coming in, you know, the parts of the story we wanted to tell and who we wanted to ask for those parts. Um, and I'm pretty, pretty happy with what we got. I mean, I don't think that the final project will map one-to-one -to, -one to the plan that we made, but you can never really plan that far ahead in, in documentary filmmaking. I'm working as producer on the Reproductive Health Voucher documentary and serving as producer and co-director on all the webisodes. This was not my first time producing a project internationally, but it was my first time producing a project within the continent of Africa. So it was quite uh, exciting and energizing uh, getting to know the lay of the land in both Kenya and Uganda. When filming this project, the documentary and the webisodes, it took us to the urban slums, as well as the highlands and valleys of western Uganda. And I feel like everywhere in between required quite a bit of traveling. But in doing so, we were able to document and meet mothers in some of the most remote places, uh, not only within western Uganda, but also in Kenya. I wasn't too familiar with voucher programs with regards to maternal health before I started working with this project. And what's been the most <coughs> striking aspect of it all is just fully understanding how critical the state of maternal health is worldwide, particularly in developing countries. I think the most powerful moment filming the documentary was the cesarean section operation that was a result of a complicated pregnancy. The mother was initially intended to give birth naturally, but because there was a complication with the baby and there seemed to be some fetal distress, the doctors had to perform a cesarean section. Had the mother not been part of the voucher program, she or the baby may not have survived. Last year alone, 2010, collectively these voucher programs were responsible for a quarter of a million babies 
were delivered because of the voucher program in these countries. We're trying something a little bit different here um, with this documentary. In, in the field of global health, we, uh, we have a ways to go, I think, in terms of, uh, of filmmaking. And what we're trying to do here is not to make a promotional, uh, a promotional movie for voucher programs. We're really trying to treat this as uh, another component of evaluation. So we're not simply trying to show the positive aspects of voucher programs, though there do seem to be quite, quite a few. Uh, but we also want to take a, a more balanced look to look at what's not working as well as uh, as what is. And sort of the process right now, we've been really working on getting things off the ground, but come February 1, 2012, I think we'll have a big launch in New York City. If the documentary, the webisodes, the new website, the infographic, the animation, and just really start off with a bang with all this wonderful material we've been gathering.